Hello, and welcome to the third episode of Let's Play Planet Coaster. We're back in Project Utopia, and here I'm just going ahead and doing a quick overview of the progress in the park. Last time we went ahead and saw that little lake that you see at the bottom of the screen there being built. And since then, we have a large, very, very large edition of the Wooden Coaster. Now, this wooden coaster, again, as you see, spans a good portion of this side of the map. And you'll also notice that there's definitely some changes in terrain and elevation as long as the ride. So, if you go ahead and look to the top right there, um, you'll notice that there's a huge mountain placed. Um, and a mountain actually grows up on, it comes from one side of the park, and it kind of goes up on the corner. Now, that mountain is there to really make some sort of, a really more atmospheric effect and really create the idea that this roller coaster follows the terrain. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to have this coaster with a pretty big first initial hill kind of go down a little bit, and then there'd be a consistent upward slope onto a second left hill. The problem being with that is that the second left hill, um, or the first left hill was not enough to get the roller coaster actually all the way up to the second left hill. Uh, so I needed to add... It ended up being three full lift hills. So you can see the first one in the background right there next to the little barn. Um, that second lift hill is uh, actually about another 100 feet tall, which um, is really designed to help give the coaster enough momentum to get to that second hill. And I went ahead and added some more unique elements in that area because I had such energy lying around it. I really could play around with it. Um, the wooden coaster is definitely something that I think is going to be possibly... The most significant element of this park, I think, that having such a wooden coaster is something that is not a lot of ma major theme parks in our world have. The main a wooden coaster is a really main attraction. That's definitely a bigger thing in China right now than it is in the United States. But I think you know parks like Kings Island put a lot of money around some of their wooden coaster. Like the Beast is something that still draws crowds from forever ago and you know i think people still definitely find the beast as an interesting ride and or influential ride on roller coaster history so the beast was actually my main influence for this ride along with mystic timbers um but i did want to copy some of that sort of gci and gravity i want to kind of combine elements of a gci wooden coaster but it ended up being more of a gravity group wooden coaster which again nothing wrong with that it's just uh, it's well i guess there's no it's just uh the ride is i think very well done and includes a <coughs> Excuse me. Wide variety of elements that really attribute to the overall feel of the, ride, of the park. Now you see here as I went ahead and built the queue, and the queue goes in actually the far side of the station, and goes under right there right before the first initial lift tail before doing some zigzags and actually connecting back to the main path. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create almost a little tunnel to go under this uh, main part of the coaster here. Now to build that tunnel. Uh, I was going to use the train features inside Planet Coaster, but there is definitely some wonky stuff going on between actually raising raising and elevating things up over pathwork, and some of the collision models and stuff like that really annoying to work with. So what I ended up doing with this is I ended up just using various different rock structures to actually build kind of like a rocky area environment here. And I went ahead and added a bunch of bushes and flowers and such to help make it look more realistic. Uh, now right now right now we're getting into a more interesting part here. Uh, I wanted to build a maintenance bay for this ride because I think, especially when you have a wooden coaster of this magnitude, you want to have some sort of maintenance area, some area to do work, things of that nature. So you'll see me, I'm going to spend a lot of time playing around with placement and finding a way to make it look as realistic as possible. Um, and there was definitely some parts of this where I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. And, uh... And how transfer tracks work in the real world. Definitely, I did some research looking up on how transfer tracks are supposed to slide from side to side to create, you know, paths that actually connect to each other. While you see, if I had slide just this curved piece over, it would have been completely disconnected from the transfer track thing, thus really providing no real benefit to the ride. So, as you see, I'm actually going to pop this at a 45 degree angle and build a straight piece here that actually goes into there. And I'm going to um, take a completely separate coaster track and build a third curve piece. Like, I'm not going to use this curve piece here. I'm actually going to build a third one and um, put it in there and build a complete support structure around it, which is what the rest of this video will be doing. Uh, Alright, so what happens kind of now, as you see, I'm making that extra curve piece. And I think that I really like Planet Coaster's ability that you can kind of build a station and then kind of jet some track out like this. I think the auto supports on the wooden coaster look beautiful. I was really um, surprised and really or happily surprised about the quality that um, the wooden coasters looked in this 
game, especially compared to some previous games like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, and how they really model real world simulation. One thing I will note, I will note whether I'm kind of building this right now, I place everything in the proper position so I can kind of know where I want to, how I want to slide it. So you see, I'm going to take, I'm going to take this um, uh, trans extra transfer track piece and I'm going to slide it just a tad to the right. After I go ahead and make this track um, the same type of texture as the um, transfer track. So I can go ahead and build that structure because I actually removed all the supports under there. Uh, so as you see here, I'm actually going to take this piece. I'm going to slide it over a little bit just to kind of give it that realistic, hey, you know, it actually slides into place kind of feel. The one thing that is unrealistic, if you look, the track does kind of stick out in the middle of the coaster track. And that would might would definitely be a problem because you see it goes through a break right there, which is not exactly how real world coasters work. Uh, <laughs> normally, you don't want coaster fins on a wooden coaster trying to uh, plow right through a break. But I think that this provides a very realistic feel, and it looks like something you would see in the real world without making it super hard to duplicate. A little bit more on the wooden coaster while you see here. I'm going to go ahead and take these steel I-beams and build kind of a structure under there, and then I'll get into the wheels and support structure for that as we get near it. But um, you'll notice that this wooden coaster, again, has three lift hills. The first lift hill kind of dives down into a valley. It has, I think, some more camelback turns. It actually has a... A double up overbank turn, which I think provides a more unique element, something you don't really see on wooden coasters, especially GCIs and things of that nature. But I think uh, it gives a pop of airtime, which is really unique. You go into a brake run, um, which is actually elevated, it's about uh, 50, 75 feet above the ground before you dive down on the edge of the river. So you're going to have a sight line, you're going to have two sight lines from that bridge actually crossing into the Enchanted Forest. The first sight line is going to be towards the water tower, as you would have expected, and that has already been demonstrated. The second sight line is actually going to be facing the other way, because you are going to have the train tracks cross there, as well as um, have the wooden coaster kind of diving down next to the water. Wind coaster then goes up, does a triple, does a double up, <laughs> and do a triple down, um, and goes ahead into the second lift tail. So... The second lift hill is something that was a lot smaller initially and actually went back and spent a lot of time revising it and building it into an element that was more dignified into the coaster and was actually something that was more dynamic because I wanted to give the coaster more features, more iconic, um, more, a more iconic vibe and things to look forward to. So I went ahead and with that second lift hill, I um, actually made it significantly taller, followed by a 90 degree turn, then it's gonna, it runs through a very... Um, World Profile Tunnel with bunny hops in it. And it has an outward-facing bunny hop, so it's kind of a bunny hop that's turning left while you're actually tilted also to the right. So that's really going to give some ejector air time before heading into a helix to go ahead and into the third lift hill. Third lift hill kind of climbs up the mountain, as you uh, probably noticed out there. There is definitely a barn up there that I built. And I'm actually going to, as I go ahead and do the scenery kind of around this, I'm going to leave that barn mostly, or leave the pat, the site line up to that barn mostly be barren, because I want to create something I want to call like the haunted hill, quote unquote, that really kind of has the wooden coaster going up there and has the wooden coaster kind of racing down below the track before the edge of said haunted hill. So uh, I went ahead and built that barn. It goes into a double down, does an, a helix, some other stuff before it rolls into a brake run, does some S bends and kind of does in a small circle before heading into this brake run right here. So this, this coaster has a lot of brake runs and a lot of stopping points throughout it, which I think created sort of a slower atmosphere, not exactly what I want to give off, but it's also something that I think is important, especially when you have so many trains running. Also, it does fly through most of the brake runs, and it really does keep up its pace. Uh, I don't think the brake runs really hurt the thrill of the ride, or really, the, like, what happens in traditional roller coasters is if you're, you know, like a wild mouse coaster, for instance, if you go through so many flat sections, it really slows down the ride and makes it feel like, you know, you're not doing very much, but I think that this definitely was not along those lines. Back to what's going on on the screen. So you see that I actually finished that I-beam structure, and I went ahead and put those wheels under it, using those black and uh, white poles to stick through them, build kind of axles. And I was like, well, I don't really have anything that, you know, any sort of motor. A plant coaster has nothing really built in that really makes it look like a motor here. So what I go ahead and did was I built um, the little gear structure back there, and I connected it to a little um, thing from the Haunted Mansion. I believe it was Haunted Mansion. set a plant coaster. Uh, added this little wall there and building these support structures for the poles now. As you see, I actually make this into a blueprint real quick. Uh, type up some stuff and put a random tag on it. And I go ahead, I'm going to duplicate it right here. And what I'm using that for is I'm going to give it some depth now, give it a, some 3D space for these support structures. I'm going to actually put in a third blueprint, or a second blueprint, excuse me, a second blueprint. And the second blueprint will really let me, um, I can just paste, 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 build some cross beams and call it a day on them. So I think that building such a transfer track isn't, it, no, I'll be real honest with you, it's not the most realistic thing that's, 
you know, existed in Planet Coaster, and it's definitely not the most realistic structure. But I think that um, it does capture the main po- forward seven element because if you go to many rides, you know, they will have a transfer track that slides back and forth on, and you know, instead of using wheels, it may also have some wheels on a rail or things of that sort. But oh, there are many that actually do use wheels like this. So I think. Uh, by trying to capture such a realistic idea in a realistic way that it, the ride is done. And actually adding a transfer track in the first place really adds a lot to the ride. Alright, you see I went ahead and made the blueprint there. And here we go, trying to actually place down these other support structures around the wheels here. Make it look like it's actually supported, which is definitely um, something I think looks good. And something that I... You know, it, it doesn't really, one problem I do have with it in this uh, video is it doesn't exactly match the wood of the roller coaster. But I, I actually go through and manually change the colors on the coaster to make it look a lot better. I hadn't gone through and actually colored the trains yet, things of that nature. In the future, uh, near future, I actually went ahead and built the station, built the transfer track trace station, added a lot of foliage to this area. So, before I even moving on to the next stuff. So, before then, I imagine we will see some station work and possibly some foliage work in this area. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.